Hi, hello, and welcome. Thanks for joining me today. I'm honored to share with you uh, my talk today that is highly inspired from my PM experience. Uh, it took me a while to decide about the title for this presentation, but what actually helped me is just by thinking about the tool that has been extremely useful and helpful for building the product I've been involved in so far, which is the use of continuous and iterative product discovery. So I'm going to share with you some concrete example I've been involved uh, into. Uh, my name is Nisreen Changel, and I'm a product manager at Google. And before diving into my presentation, I want to share with you a little bit about my background. So I have a quite technical background. So I had my electrical engineering degree back in 2008 uh, from Grenoble. And I even get myself even deeper in tech by doing an industrial PhD in collaboration with Nokia Bell Labs. I've been working on signal processing and streaming systems. Being a researcher is a fantastic time because it's usually a time where you're given a pure challenging problem. And you're also given the time to get super deep into the challenge and the problem space to find out new innovative, innovative ideas. Uh, so during my research time, I had to come up with idea, file patents, present the idea in conferences and also internally. But what I was really missing during that time is the user interactions and the feedback, feedback from the users, of course. So uh, usually the way how it worked for me before is that when my prototype was successful, I had to hand it over to the business division who took over the implementation and I had no visibility whether any user is using it or uh, if any user is happy or unhappy about it. So that curiosity took me to the PM world. And I moved from Paris to Stockholm where I joined Microsoft as a technical product manager for Skype, specifically for the video call side. I worked on features like uh, enabling uh, group video call uh, for uh, Skype mobile. I also worked on enabling Skype to Skype calls using HoloLens augmented reality Microsoft device. I also was involved in enabling uh, Skype for business and Skype for consumer interoperability calls. And after being a PM for four years at Microsoft, I moved to Spotify. And I mostly worked on media experience improvement for the, um, for the Spotify users. So some of the features I've been involved into are the video podcast, of course, and also the uh, Spotify hi-fi or high quality uh, audio experience. It's only a couple of uh, weeks ago that I joined Google as a technical product manager as well. And my role is to improve uh, video conference call and Google Meet uh, media experience. Besides my PM role, uh, I'm very much involved in the uh, PM community. I love sharing my knowledge uh, with PM, PMs. Uh, so I've been giving talks in different institutions and communities like uh, product schools, of course. Uh, I'm also very involved in the product management festival. Something that I discovered and I'm enjoying a lot is sharing my knowledge with uh, students. Uh, so I discovered that engineer school usually or rarely has the knowledge about product management. So I started teaching and sharing PM uh, knowledge with the engineer students. Uh, I've been doing that with uh, Central Paris in Paris and uh, also with KTH in Stockholm. On a personal level, I'm originally from Tunisia a country that I give a lot of credit to for the person who am I today. And I'm trying to help uh, like remotely by sharing knowledge or by mentoring, specifically uh, girls and women in tech. So I'm trying to uh, help those by mentoring them and giving them advice how to succeed their tech career in different fields. Before getting into the core of my presentation, I just want to share that uh, all views and opinion presented and expressed are mine and do not reflect uh, the official policy or position of the company I have been part of. So let me start with a statement that I guess most of the PMs here agree with me on is that one of our main goals as a product managers is to focus on delivering value for our users, right? 
So we may argue and disagree on what the value is. Uh, and there is, of course, the economic value and there is the customer satisfaction value. And I like that today we have a couple of frameworks that uh, describe what value is. So one of the nice frameworks are the uh, Black Swan Farming, for example, for explaining the, uh, the economic value. And we have also uh, one of the famous customer satisfaction value framework that is the heart, which focus on happiness, engagement, adoption, retention, and task success. But whether if it's an economic value or a customer satisfaction value, that should be a focus for most of the PM. And to deliver that value, we most of the time have to explore the problem space and the solution space both at the same time. So uh, we call that in the PM world the product delivery and the product discovery. Uh, product discovery is more about discovering the user challenges, uh, trying to identify the pain point and look at what really make uh, their life challenging so that we can offer a solution to them. And the product de delivery, on the other hand, is turning these challenges into solutions that can be delivered to the user hands. So product delivery is when your solution is handed to your users. But what both product discovery and product delivery has in common is a shared goal. So they both target reducing uncertainties. So specifically for software building, uh, you have a lot of uncertainty throughout all steps from ideation to shipping. So it's you're making hypothesis throughout the entire journey. And by doing iteratively and continuously uh, shifting between product discovery and product delivery, you're trying to reduce these uncertainties. Today, multiple frameworks and technique have become like commonly used, such as design thinking, for example, which is the journey of discovery and finding the problem challenges. There is, of course, the lean startup that completely focus on building product that user need. And then, of course, you have the agile methodologies that try to deliver the product in, into increments and in an iterative way uh, so that the user can provide feedback as quickly as possible. What all these three techniques has in common is that they are all based on iterative process in order to allow for a quick validation and a quick feedback. What I want to discuss in this slide is the importance for not mixing up between iterative and incremental. I saw in many cases and many teams sometimes where people end up mixing and uh, getting confused about the iterative process and uh, use them into an incremental process instead. So incremental development slice the work into small bite-sized pieces. So as if you're taking a big project, you slice it into small pieces and you keep on building one on top of each other without reviews, uh, revisiting your hypothesis or changing your plan. The uh, iterative process, on the other hand, is the process of repeating the process by refining a cycle of working. So it's all about stopping, inspecting your environment, collecting feedback, and adapting your plan, and maybe even adapting, changing your, your initial plan completely. And these are called iterations, of course. I wanna use this very famous and common example of how to build a car. I guess most of you have seen it. But this is a, a purely, I would say, a classical incremental process example where I ask you to build a car, you're going to build it piece by piece. You start with the wheels and then you add element to it until you get to the final car. And that's where your users start to give you feedback on your product. This will perfectly work if you are sure and 100% that your user wants a car which most of the case is not true because I noticed throughout my experience that there is a huge difference and a huge gap between what the customer needs and what the customer sometimes asks us for. So it's very important sometimes to focus more on what their needs are and what their challenge exactly are rather than what they really ask us for or what they really ask, uh, the type of product they, they come up and ask it for. And that relates for, to the famous quote, of course, where people don't want a quarter inch, 
drill, but they want a quarter inch hole. So it's very important to keep in mind that we need to solve the whole problem, not the trail problem. And uh, iterative process is only effective if it uses data from the previous iteration in order to rethink about your hypothesis and rethink about your solution and uh, make sure that you are validating the value every, at every step. At Spotify, we have a framework uh, that we uh, commonly use, and it's called the Think It, Build It, Ship It, Tweak It. So let me drive uh, into each of these steps. And by the way, this is also an iterative process. It's not a one-time uh, four steps. The Think It is usually the discovery phase. So that's where PMs will go and try to identify what the user really need identify their challenges and pain point, and create hypotheses. This is a quite risky phase because here where you're making the, the biggest uh, or the longest list of hypotheses. Then you get into the delivery phase and the delivery phase starts with building or trying to get something concrete. And it's very important to do it in a small step. So that's why we usually use MVPs or like minimum viable product so that you can provide it to the user uh, as and get feedback as soon as possible. The uh, exit uh, element of the delivery phase is usually with the ship it. So once you build your product, you ship it. But it's very important before shipping your product to identify your minimum criteria for success. So how can you know after like a couple of days or weeks uh, from the shipment, whether your product was a success or not? And how can you answer, for example, the question of, have we moved the metric the way we wanted or, or the, the other way around? Uh, and then you will start getting feedback, of course, and you will start getting data. And this data is extremely valuable. So you need to start continuously looking at the data in order to revisit your hypothesis. Those that you made on the think it phase uh, is going to be validated or not from the tweak it side. And I like calling it rethink it as well because the tweak it is going to be the entry point for your next think it phase. As I mentioned earlier, it's going to be iterative. Here is a more uh, detailed view of the framework. So as I mentioned earlier, you usually start the think it with an idea. This idea will become a prototype at some point. Your prototype you will uh, fuel in the build it uh, phase, and the build it will come up with the build or a piece of code. Your piece of code will at some point be deployed and ship it to the uh, to the end user or your customers, and that's the ship it phase. The ship it will gonna be uh, will give you very valuable data that you will uh, start to analyze. Analyzing data will get you to the tweak it because that's how you're gonna revisit your hypothesis. And by revisiting your hypothesis, you're going to think it again or rethink it again. And this is going to be a continuous, uh, endless, probably, loop uh, that will lead you to get to the right product and the right value you're targeting. In a big organization, when you have hundreds of teams, uh, it can be risky to continuously uh, doing iteration, and especially, specifically if you're continuously adapting your plan. Uh, it's very important to avoid chaos. And uh, for me, the most important part is to try to focus on having a consistent product. What helped me, or from my perspective, what really helped me a lot when building features is having alignment toward a common goal. So uh, most com company today try to publish uh, and, and like even widely publish their vision and mission and strategies. Uh, so, so that all these teams that are continuously adapting their plan keep on focusing on that goal. In the next three slides, I'm going to share with you a concrete example I've been involved in, and I uh, will share with you like the benefit of doing this continuous delivery versus continuous uh, discovery, and how uh, this can uh, lead to very good and valuable uh, output. So Spotify uh, widely publish its uh, mission. And for me, this is a super aspirational mission that I've been very uh, guiding and inspiring and also helped a lot 
figuring out the uh, priority order and sometimes saying no and yes uh, to, uh, to some features. And the mission states, our mission is to unlock the potential of human creativity by giving a million creative artists the opportunity to live off their art and billions of fans the opportunity to enjoy and be inspired by it. In addition to the mission, usually comes the Spotify strategy. And again, Spotify publish uh, like internally and even externally the strategy. And the last announced one was the uh, audio first one. So audio first strategy came to enhance and uh, keep the focus on making the best audio experience by offering the best music experience and the best podcast experience as well. But audio first doesn't mean audio only. So as long as any other type of media can be provided to enhance and improve the audio experience, that's completely fine. So my team and I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out what could be other media type that can be used to serve into getting the best audio experience. Video media came out to be a great media type that can be used in favor of improving uh, the audio experience. And since 2016, we shipped multiple video product features. So we started with the uh, Metallica documentary videos in 2016. Then uh, we uh, shipped the video canvases in 2018 where artists can upload a small video that can be looped on the player background. Uh, then, Last year, we shipped with the video podcast where Spotify user can watch podcasts in addition to listening to them. And just recently, uh, we announced the new feature, which is the Spotify clips. Uh, so this is a feature that allow artists to interact with their fan through some small video clips. Uh, could be like their way to the concert or uh, in, the, in the recording studio or whatever, as long as they, it allows the artist and the fan to connect with each other. So, of course, uh, as Daniel Egg said it, we aim to make mistakes faster than anyone else. And Spotify recognizes that when you wish to be faster than the competition, you need to experiment, and while doing so, you will fail. But it's much, much better to uh, value failure recovery than value failure avoidance because by avoiding failure, you may end up uh, missing opportunity. And that completely applied to the previous example I shared with you, where we ship it video into small different feature and small different iteration, because from the previous example, what we did is that we, sh we, we ship it, of course, iteratively, but at each iteration, we learned it so much the user gave us so much value that uh, we took what was very good and applied it for the next iteration. And we removed what was not necessarily good and didn't provide the value we expected. So back to the car example, I just want to mention again that. Uh, so the good thing about iterative process is that it focuses more on the value than the product itself. So if you want to, if you are sure about having a car is the, is the, is the target, then doing incrementally is perfect. But most of the case, like even in the previous uh, example I shared with you of the Spotify video, we were not sure exactly whether canvas is the best thing to shape or video clips is the best thing to ship. But by, by doing and shipping them uh, iteratively, we learn from each, each step. And if I get back to the car example, like, by doing product discovery, we discover in this specific case that probably a motorcycle is uh, provide better value than the car itself. Because maybe from your env environment or your condition, that's exactly what you need. And even the user, when he will try the motorcycle, will realize that, oh yes, this is probably what I, I need rather than the car itself. So product discovery, Iteration allows to discover what exactly user and creator want. So it's, it's uh, by offering them a feature, they realize whether that um, cover a need or not.
One of the biggest advantage of doing real iterative product discovery and not incremental process is that it helps doing more effective uh, work rather than efficient work. And efficiency is, for example, doing the thing right. So I ask you to do a car and you do a great car. Great job. Effectiveness is about doing the right thing. So I ask you to do the car or build the car and you will do your uh, problem exploration exercise and you will figure out that actually me as a user don't necessarily need a car, but I need a motorcycle or a caravan or a car cargo bike or whatever. So just by exploring and taking the e exploration uh, seriously, uh, I will end up giving you a better value than what you asked me in the in the beginning. So effectiveness help building the right product rather than building it right. And this is even diff could be even different from how it was imagined in the early phase of the planning. Uh, that reminds me of quite a quite famous quote from Rich Mironov, who actually said that there is nothing more wasteful than brilliantly engineering a product that don't sell. So if you spend a lot of months building it, a car and you realize at the end that the car is not providing the value that you expected and probably no one is going to buying it at the end, this is going to be a huge waste of time. But if you focus on the value and focus on making sure that your product will be adopted, then, then you will start to have a lot of benefit. So with that, uh, I'm getting to the end of my presentation. But I want to end up with recalling that regardless of what your product is, one goal rarely change. So make sure that you focus on your goal and make sure you're, that you're delivering the value to your customers. I know this is much easier said than, uh, than done, but sometimes it takes a while for a value to surface. So just keep on trying is the, is the key here because we, we need to ask ourself question like for example how can I make sure that I'm providing the right value how can I make sure that I'm not missing opportunity again the best way of answering these questions is to to try and get the user feedback as early as possible so with that I want to end up with three takeaways from my presentation uh, the first is that product discovery is key for providing value if you mess up with this uh, with these steps it's, it's, it's getting you into a very, very risky area. The other thing is that it's very important to do this product discovery in a complete iterative way. So it's not a, a done exercise and then you focus mostly on how to deliver it. It's, it's something that needs to be revis visited every time you ship a piece of your product. And uh, something I already said, but it's very important also to keep in mind is that iteration is not incrementation. So product manager need to make sure that they avoid falling into the scrum fall trap. What I call by scrum fall trap is when your product is planted into kind of waterfall style, but then it is executed in scrum in iteration without revisiting your original plan. So keep in mind that it's very important to focus on like while delivering your product, get the right feedback so that you revisit your, your initial plan. All right. With that, I'm getting to the end of my presentation. Uh, I want to thank you for listening. Uh, I also welcome any feedback or comments, so please reach out. And I'm also available on LinkedIn, so see you soon.